Okay, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter six is Random Number File Writer. All right, so write a program that writes a series of random numbers to a file. And each random number should be in the range of one through 500. The application should let the user specify how many random numbers the file will hold. All right, so we are going to write Python code to create a file, first of all, and then in that file, we are going to write to the file um, random numbers in the range of one through through to 500. And the user is going to specify how many random numbers the file will hold, right? So this question has different functions in there. It has different tasks in there. So let's go ahead and create functions also to kind of um, functions that will represent each task, right? All right, so we know that we are going to be writing a program to to write random numbers to a file. We see over here, write a program that writes a series of random numbers to a file. So since we're going to be working with random numbers, let's go ahead and import the random module. The random module is a file that has functions that allow us to create random numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and import random, okay? So now that we've imported random, we can go ahead and use the functions in there to create random numbers. All right, so one task in this question is to generate a random number, right? So let's go ahead and define a function that's going to generate a random number. We can see over we can see over here. Write the program that writes a series of random numbers to, to a file. We we know that's a function. So let's go ahead and define a function. And I'm going to call it um, generate random number. So generate random number. And generate random number is basically going to generate a random <laughs> generate a random number, right? So I'm going to Call a method, sorry, a function in the random module, which is called rand int. Okay, you can think of it as random integer. Rand int and rand int will generate a random integer in a range that you specify. Now, because that rand int method, sorry, I keep on saying method, sorry, because that rand int function is in the is in the rand random module, we have to call random. We have to use the name of the module. And use a dot operator or the access operator to call the rand int method. Now the rand int again will create a random integer in the range of in the range you specify. So we have to specify the range. We have to specify the starting point of the range and the ending point of the range. So I want a random integer in the range of one through to five hundred. That's what the question says over here. Now five hundred is included in the range which means that it's possible we're going to get 500 as a random number returned from this rand int method. Uh, keep on saying method. Ah. <laughs> returned from this rand int function. All right, so when this rand int function returns that random number, we need a place to store it. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it random number. All right, so random number is going to store whatever random integer in the range of one to 500 that this random rand int function returns. This is going to store that. Once we have it stored in random number, let's go ahead and return it. So I'm going to go ahead and return random number. All right, so we're done with this, with this uh, function. All right, so let's also go ahead and define a main function. Now, the main function in most programming languages is basically the function where your program is. It's the function that calls every other function. And it's, it's good practice. It's a, it's a common thing in most programming languages that to have a main function that basically it runs everything, right? So let's go ahead and define a main function. And the main function is basically what where, where our program is going to start, okay? Now, we are just defining the main function, which means once we're done, to ha to, to really see anything happen, we have to call the main function for that to happen, right? For, for any, anything in the main function to work. Okay, so in the main function, we can see over here that it says, when you read the question, it says the application should let the user specify how many random numbers the file will hold. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's ask the user to specify how many random numbers the file will hold. So I'm going to call the input function. And the input function takes the argu an argument. And, and the argument is basically what is going to be displayed to the user in double quotation. So I'm going to tell the user, please, or let's say, how many numbers should the random File hold. Ah, first in history that I've typed something without making an error. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. What well, kind of? It's almost true. <laughs> All right. So this is going to display this to the user. The input function is going to display this to the user, and it's going to allow the user to type in something. 
right? So now whatever the user types is going to be returned as a string, right? So, well, before that, before that. So the input function is going to display this to the user and allow the user to type in something, right? And whatever the user type, okay, types, it's going to be returned to us. And once it's returned to us, we need a place to store it. So first of all, let's store that in a variable. I'm going to call this number of random numbers. Now I like to name my variable um, variables long, like we like like them with long names because it's 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 clear for me when I'm reading my code. But you can name them short if you want. All right, so number of random nu numbers with an S is going to store how many random numbers the file should hold. Now the user is going to type this. Now one more th one thing. The input function by default always returns a string, even if the user types in a number. We're asking the user how many numbers they sh uh, the file should hold. So most likely they're going to type in a number. And, but the thing is the input function by default always returns a string. But we don't want a string stored here because we want to work with real numbers. If you, want, if you wanted to perform math with this number, we can't. If we wanted to do something with a number, we can't. Because this number, whatever the user types, if it's a number, will be stored here as a string. So we need to go ahead and convert whatever the user has typed to an int. In this case, an integer, right? Because we want we want a number of random numbers. How many numbers? How many number of random, random numbers should be written to the file? If it, is it five or six or ten or two? So let's go ahead and convert this one int. And to do that, we have to basically surround this with an int function. So I'm surrounding everything that the user has typed, everything that the user has typed, with parentheses with the int function in parentheses basically I'm converting everything that the user has typed to an int and storing the result in number of random numbers so number of random numbers now will hold an int value notice one notice one more thing that over here I've exceeded this line here this gray line over here this gray line is a guideline for me not to exceed 80 characters on a line now it's a Python standard okay not to exceed um, 80 char characters on a line over here from if you start ca counting the characters from the beginning of this line all the way to the, this gray line it's 80 characters and i don't want to exceed it so i'm going to break this line into two i'm going to close the string here right close the string here and i'm going to concatenate it with the beginning of the string here and just put some spaces here and now i can break it somewhere around here but before you break any line in python you type in a backslash and you hit the enter key right so i'm not exceeding this line anymore I've broken this line into two. It's still the same line. I just I've just broken it into, broken it into two so I can read it, right? So I'll have the users well, um, the number of random numbers stored here. All right. So the next thing we should do is now we have the random, uh, number of random numbers. Let's go ahead and open the file. Let's go ahead and try to open the file. And to do that, I'm going to use the open function. The open function takes in a couple of arguments. The name of the file you want to open, and the second argument is what mode you want to open this file in so i'm going to specify the name of the file i want to open all right so i'm going to give it a name right when you open a file in let's say well i'll talk about that in a second so let, let's just give it a name all right so i'm going to call this random numbers dot txt right and the second argument is going to be what mode am i opening this file in i'm going to put that in double quotations and i'm going to use the character w which means that I'm opening this random numbers.txt file in write mode. When you open the file in write mode, you're basically creating the file. If the file doesn't exist, the file will be created um, wherever you specify it. If it already exists, if a file that has this name already exists in the same place you're, st you're saving this file, this, that file will be replaced by this new file. That means if the file has content in there, if the old file has content in there, this new file will replace it. Well, you know, and it'll, and it'll be black, right? So the reason why we're doing this is because, uh, well, first of all, we don't have any file existing, right? We haven't even saved this program. Um, but before we save it, right? So let, let's just let's just talk about this. We open you're opening this file in write mode. If the, if the file doesn't exist, it will be created. If it exists, it will be replaced. And once you open this file, it's this open function is going to return the memory address, the memory location of the a file object which is going to be created. Okay, open this will create the file, and this will hold the memory address. Open, open the open function will return the memory address of the file that the file object that was just created. Basically, a file object will be created, and this will return the memory address. And once it returns the memory address, 
we need to store it in a variable so that the variable can point to the file. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call this variable, let's see, um, I'm going to call it um, file to be written to, to be written to be written to so it kind of makes sense file to be written to right you can name this however whatever you want but file to be written to is basically going to be the file we're going to write to right so this variable is going to now refer to the file that we are just creating all right again if the file already exists it's going to be replaced if it doesn't exist it will be created this variable is going to refer to that file but it will be holding the memory address the location of the, the address of basically the, f the file object we're creating over here. All right, so now we have the file open, which means it's ready to be written to. Now, notice we are going to be writing to the file, not just one time, not just two times. The user specified how many times we should write to the file. So that means we have to create a loop using this number. We have to create a loop that's going to iterate this number of times, right? If the, if the user specified five times, we have to create a loop that's going to iterate five times. So let's go ahead and create uh, a for loop, right? So let's say for, I'm going to go ahead and create a target variable and I'm going to call it random number count. So for random number count, random number count is going to keep track of the current count we are. So for example, what current, how, uh, what's, what's the random number we are writing? What's, what's the number of the random number we are writing to right now? I'm, I'm talking in terms of count. Is this the second, is this the second random number we are, we are writing to the file? Is this the fourth random number we are writing to the file? Random, random number count is going to keep track of that number. All right, so for random number count in, oops. For random number count in range, we're going to specify a range over here. I'm going to start from one, okay, all the way to number of random numbers plus one. Now, why plus one? Assuming the user typed in five for random numbers, okay, I'm going to type in five, which means the user should be, this loop should basically iterate five times, right? Let me put this colon here first, let me put this colon here. So this means that, okay, the, the loop, random number first of all is going to hold a number one, and it's going to keep iterating until it gets to four, because guess what, the ending, this is the starting point of the loop, and this is the ending, the ending value. But the thing is the loop iterates, okay, one less than the ending value. So this is really four, one to four. Five is not included. The loop will iterate from one all the way to four, okay? Five is not included. The loop iterates one less, okay, than the ending, the ending value, right? So we have to add plus one. So this becomes six. One to six actually means one to five. If you have one to six here, which it, it means that the loop is starting from one all the way to five, because the ending value is, you know, the loop iterates all the way to one less than the ending value. The ending value is six over here, so it's really five. So if the user really wanted to put five, you, you always have to add one to it. So six, six won't be included. It's always going to be one less than the ending value. That's why we add, that's why we add pl um, plus one. So number of random numbers plus one. All right. Okay. So that's how many times a loop is going to iterate. Now, each time, what we want, what we want to do is we want to generate a random number. We have a method. Sorry, I keep on saying method. We have a function that's going to generate a random number for us. So let's just call it. We're going to generate a random number. Right. We know the random number. When you call this method, it's basically going to return a random number to us. So I'm going to create a variable that's going to to store that random number. So random number, this variable is going to store the random number th that is returned from the generate random number function. It doesn't matter that this variable name is the same as this, it doesn't matter. This random number is located in the main function while this random number is located in the generate random number function. They are considered two different things because they are in two different functions. The scope of this random number is within the generate random number function and the scope of this random number is within the main function, so it's fine, right? So, yeah. So what we, once we have this random number, what we want to do is we want to write to the file. Since we have the variable referring to the file, we can use it. We can say file to be written to dot, okay, write. Well, write is a function 
okay, of, of, of a file object, right? A function of a file object becomes a method. So this is, this is now a method. A, a, a method. a method is basically a function that belongs to, an, to a method, okay? So file to be written to the write. Write takes in what you want to write to the file. Now what we want to write to the file is a random number which we have here. So I'm going to basically type in random number. We want to type in a random number that was just generated. Right? But the thing is, random number is really an integer, right? It's really returning an, a random integer. That's what it's returning here. So we have an integer stored here. But before you write anything to the file to a file, it has to be a string. You can't just write an integer or you're going to have an error. So I'm going to go ahead and, and convert this random number to a string by surrounding it with the str function. I'm convert I'm writing to the file the random number converted to a string. Before you write anything to a file, it has to be a string. 